In this tutorial, we're going to look at a couple of different ways of correcting and editing skin tones. First of all, we use a style brush as a very fast and simple method. And then we'll look at the skin tone tab in the color editor, which gives us access to a few more advanced options. I've already edited this photo and we can take a quick look at the before and after. In summary, you can see it's been brightened overall and some contrast added. If I zoom in on the subject's face, typically we can see that the nose and cheeks and forehead are a slightly different skin tone and show a bit more red in terms of color tone. If we go to our style brushes tool, and in particular the enhancements category, you'll find an option called red skin reduction. So if I select that, capture one will immediately pick the brush tool for me and set it up to work particularly well with these adjustments. Now my brush is a bit on the small side at the moment, so I'll right click and make my brush larger. And now I just need to brush on the area where the skin is a little bit on the red side. So around here, and then some further up the top. If I right click and show you the brush settings once more, you can see the flow rate is set very low. This simply means that it takes a while for the adjustment to build up. So as I brush over the subject, the change will be quite gradual. So let's go ahead and do a bit more and then we can turn the layer off and see what effect that's had. I'll do some down here as well, being careful not to affect the tone of the lips. Okay, let's go ahead and turn that layer off and you can see before and after. So it's taken that red tone out and evened up the skin tone nicely. If I feel it's too strong, don't forget you can dial down the opacity to go anywhere from no adjustment whatsoever to the full adjustment that you've brushed in. If I press M on my keyboard, you can see the mask. This will also give you a clue if you think you need to fill in perhaps any areas that you've missed up and around here as an example, or maybe slightly under here. But don't be too concerned about being super accurate because it is a targeted adjustment. So if I accidentally spilled onto the background as an example, I wouldn't be too worried about that. If we want to see what this style brush is doing, if you have a look in the advanced tab, you can see the tone that is selected and the saturation has been reduced and the hue shifted as well. Okay, let's try a different method using the skin tone tab. So for now, I'll turn off this layer, so we're back to no adjustments. And I'll make a new field layer, and we call that skin tone. I've decided to make this a field layer, so if I press M on my keyboard, I'll just zoom out for a second. You can see the mask covers the whole photo. But what this enables me to do is first visualize the effect of my color edits on the skin tone, and then I can decide exactly where I want to target it. So let's go ahead and switch to the skin tone tab. First of all, I need to target my preferred skin tone. So the skin tone that I'm happy with and the tone I'd like to match everything else to. So I'll select the picker here and then choose on my preferred skin tone and I'm gonna go around here. Straight away, you can see the color range selection and the dot in the center is that target skin tone. So what I want to do now is expand out this range and make sure I'm covering all the skin tone on the subject's face. And as a double check, if I turn on view selected color range, everything will turn to monochrome that is not in my selection and what's in the selection will remain in color. So I can see here, I've got a pretty good selection of his face. All I need to do now is use the uniformity sliders to push any color in that selected range to my target skin color. So as I move the hue slider across, you can see the skin tone becomes equalized over the subject's face. If I do the same for saturation and also lightness. Now lightness, we have to be a bit careful because at maximum strength, it now looks very unnatural and flat. So to keep some realism in there, I'm going to back these sliders off. 
So if we turn this layer on and off, you can see the effect. An undesired result is that it's also affecting the lips. And certainly on other photos, this could be an unwanted correction on hair, clothing, and anything that sits in your defined color range. So we've got a couple of choices now. If you remember, we applied a field mask, so that's over the entire subject. I could either erase some parts of the mask where I don't want my skin tone correction to show, or I could simply remove this entire mask and brush it back in. And remember, the reason for having the field mask first of all was so I could very easily see the effect of what's going on in the color editor. So what I'll do is right click on my skin tone layer and say clear mask. So that will get rid of the mask, but I still have the edits in my color editor. I just need to brush them back in where I want. So I choose my brush cursor tool, go onto my subject, right click and decide if I want to have that low flow again, which means the adjustment builds up slowly, or if I want to increase that so my adjustment happens a bit faster. So let's try that. So I'm gonna brush over the subject's forehead and you can see that pretty much instantaneous correction there. Let's do the same down here on the cheeks and also down here as well. And once again, I'm not being too picky with the brush because it's a very targeted adjustment for this skin tone. So there wouldn't be any effect if I was to brush on the background. I could correct the ears too, if I wish. And there we go, one corrected skin tone. Now, once again, if uh, I decided that was a bit too good of a correction, we can always back off the opacity from anywhere to no correction to somewhere in between. So if we turn this layer off, you can see without the correction and back on with the correction. So that's a couple of choices for editing skin tones. The style brush works very, very well, but don't forget you have the skin tone tab in the color editor for those trickier situations and when you would like to have more control.